Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. Guys, I'm always, always looking for practice exercise for my students in my medical coding program. And I'm always trying to make worksheets or create little study guides for them to use to keep practicing with. And in, in my search for, for worksheets or for questions, I found an old book under my garage that had really good questions in it, but it's from 2011. Well, in 2011, we were still on ICD-9 CM. And so with the move to ICD-10 CM, and then on outpatient, we still use CPT. We use CPT back then as well. CPT won't be too bad, but I'm, I can't wait till we get to some of the ICD-9 questions that we need to convert to ICD-10. And so as I'm working these questions and changing up a little bit, I figured why not do a video for my channel as well. And I wanted to share that information with you and help you understand, but at the same time, you can help me do these questions. So today I just wanted to, um, I was looking at the evaluation and management section because that's where I start CPT. I spend like four weeks alone and just E and M. That that section is such a big question, a big section. I have lots of questions in that area. And what I'm seeing in the last month is from from my students, a lot of them have not been properly taught how to use the alphabetic index in the E and M section. They just turn to the E and M section, find this and go. But as a new coder, when you're first starting out, that's not the best route. As with any coding, you're always taught, go to your alphabetic index first, find your code or range of codes for CPT, and then refer to your tabular to confirm your code before assigning it. So in this exercise of questions that I have for today, I wanna show you step-by-step step how to look up an evaluation and management code. If that's all you get out of this video today, then I've accomplished a big step. Because again, a lot of people don't use the alphabetic index for evaluation and management, and you should be. You should be. So I have three questions that I that I have, and they're from um, 2011. Um, some of the codes I have had a chance to update, and some I haven't. So work with me as I work through these exercises but I wanna take you through the steps that I do and maybe that'll help you better understand e &M coding. Okay, first, let me minimize my little box so that you can still see me as we work through these questions, okay? All right, of course, we're in CPT coding. We're doing evaluation and management. And this question says, patient is admitted to the hospital with acute abdominal pain. The attending medical physician requests a surgical consult. The consultant agrees to see the patient and conducts a comprehensive history and physical examination. The physician ordered lab work to rule out pancreatitis along with an ultrasound of the gallbladder and abdominal x-ray. Due to the various diagnoses possibilities and the test reviewed, a moderate medical decision was made. So when I work evaluation management, first thing I try to do, let me show you a little worksheet that I try to work on. Because again, I'm trying to teach you how to use your alphabetic index. We're gonna start with our main term. Well, we just said on this worksheet, that we are working in evaluation and management. So first area that you need to look up as far as your main term is look up the main term, evaluation and management. If you go to your back of your books to your alphabetic index and look up the main term, evaluation and management, let's start there. Now the next question I always ask myself is what type of visit is this? Is this an office visit, emergency room, hospital, what? So looking back at our worksheet, what type of visit? Patients admitted, they're admitted to the hospital, but the attending physician requests a surgical consultation. This is all about what the consultant 
The consultant agrees to see the patient and the consultant con conducts a comprehensive history and physical exam, then ordered all of the stuff. So again, this is a hospital consultation. So I'm going back to my worksheet. The type of visit that I'm looking at is a consultation. Well, when you look up consultation in the back of your book, it gives you the range of codes. Let me go back and look up evaluation management. If you're in the 2022 book, and if I go down to consultation, it gives me 99241 through 99255. All right. So let me put that range of codes here. Well, first, let's look at this range of codes 99241 through 99255. But this was a that consultation, whether it's outpatient or inpatient. INPT, let's put INPT so we're not mixed up. So I need to separate out outpatient range of codes. If you look at those range of codes, it's 99241 through 99245. Well, this visit was a hospital consultation. Well, in hospital or inpatient consultations are 99251 through 99255. Well, we're more concerned. Look back at this case. It said this patient was in the hospital and a surgical consult was ordered. So this consultation was done in the hospital. So my correct range of codes is this 251 to 255 for inpatient consult. Okay, do we all see that? Because remember up here, outpatient is 241 to 245. Well, we're not worried about outpatient. This is a inpatient consultation. So that's 251 to 255. Now the next question, depending on what setting, if the patient is new or established, plays a role. Well, with consultations, no, it doesn't. So I don't have to worry about splitting it up. And then your components. Remember your key components are history, exam, and medical decision-making. Remember there are a total of seven, but those are the key. But with the new rule for 2021-2022 office and other outpatient setting, the decision is based on medical decision-making or time. Well, this is, this is, we don't have to worry about this because this is not an office or other outpatient setting. We said that this was an inpatient consultation. So the only thing we're worried about is this range of codes. So based on this range of codes, let's identify our key components. So what level of history, what level of exam, and what level of medical decision making was done? So looking at the history, in the reading it said, he conducts a comprehensive history and physical exam. So I want comprehensive and comprehensive. And what level of medical decision making was done? Let's look back and see. Physician ordered lab work, rule out pancreatitis, along with ultrasound of gallbladder and abdominal due to various diagnosed possibility tests reviewed. Moderate medical decision was made. So go back here and it was moderate. So looking at our range of codes from 99251 to 255, what is our code for this admission? We're looking for comprehensive history. With the comprehensive history that leads us to a 99254. The level of exam was comprehensive, which is a 99254. And the medical decision making was of moderate complexity, 99254. So in this case, the final code for this example is a 99254. So because we've got the comprehensive history, comprehensive exam, and medical decision making of moderate complexity. Moderate medical decision making. So looking at our possibilities, we had 99244. Well, we learned from just the range of codes alone 
that 244 is not even in our range of codes possible for the inpatient consultation because that is a outpatient consultation. So that can't be a possibility. That is out. 222, again, wasn't even in the range. And two, let's look at 222. 99222 is an initial hospital care. Well, that's not the correct code, not the correct setting. 99204 is an office, new office patient. So the answer, and there's our 99254. So we know our correct answer has to be C. Now, again, looking at this worksheet, uh, will you be able to, one, go to the main term, and in the next two examples that I'm going to leave with you to work on, I can go ahead and tell you the main term is going to always be evaluation and management. So my question next to you is going to be, what type of visit is your patient experiencing? And then based on that type of visit, what is the range of codes? Because remember, evaluation management gives us a range of codes. And then my next question is, does new or established play a role? And if so, identify whether your patient is new or established. Identify your key components. Don't forget our new 2021-2022 rules on office and other outpatient setting that is based on medical decision-making and time. And then... Look at your level of history, look at your level of exam, and look at your level of medical decision making to determine what your final code will be. Okay, so I'm trying to make this as simple a quick worksheet or something that you could work on, and then give whatever the final code. Let's put on here final code. And based on what you find, look back to see what your multiple choice options are and see if you're in the right setting. So coach, where are we going? Well, here you go. Here's number two, an established patient. Now remember, you need to know what an established patient is. If you don't know the difference between a new and an established patient, go back to my CPT E&M visit, uh, e visits or E&M videos on my YouTube channel. And I explained the difference between a new and established patient returns to the physician's office for follow-up of his hypertension and diabetes. The physician takes the blood pressure and references the patient's last three glucose tests. The patient is still running above normal glucose levels, so the physician decides to adjust the patient's insulin. An expanded history was taken and physical examination was performed. Here are your options. Is it a 99213? Remember, this is an established patient, so you'd be under fill in your sheet, E&M type of visit, mm -hmm. range of codes. Is it new or established? I might need to move this up because in this case, new or established plays a key role. Hint, hint. So let's look back at it again. Established patient returns to the office, so we already know our range of codes for established patient office visit, range of codes, established, and bring in your key components. Identify your key components and identify your level or your final code for that. Okay, here are your possibilities. And as you're looking at these guys, if you have to pause this video so that you can go through the steps and go back and forth like I did do that. And for number two, patient arrives in the emergency room via a medical helicopter. The patient has sustained multiple life-threatening injuries due to a multiple car accident. The patient goes into cardiac arrest 10 minutes after arrival. An hour and 30 minutes of critical care time is spent trying to stabilize the patient. And these are your code ranges for this one. My question, can you code these? Again, what setting is your patient in? Use this little worksheet. Create you one just like this. Look up your main term, evaluation management. Find the type of visit that this patient was in. Okay. And then the next question is asking, what is the range of codes? Does new or established pay a, play a role? And what are the key components? But you notice in this one, this patient had critical care. 
So make sure you capture that as well. And then based on this, which of these codes would you assign? And again, like we did before, some of these you, imagine taking your test, wean out the ones that you know do not apply to the situation. Established patient returns to the physician's office. Well, we know 202 is new. 232 is not a physician's office. 213 is established, 214 established. So looking at those questions, there's multiple things you could do with this question, just looking at it and determining what your answer could be. But guys, look through these and try to answer these questions. And use this little, I call it a little worksheet, like my pacifier. Create you a little worksheet that asks the questions. What's the main term? What's the type of visit? What's the range of codes that you would use for that type of visit? Does new or established play a role in determining the correct code for this visit? And then what are your key components? Where do they come in? And don't forget the new 2021-2022 rule about office and other outpatient settings based on the medical decision-making or time. And then identify what your final code would be. But the key, if I don't teach you anything else, is make sure you're using your alphabetic index to look up these codes, even if you're in evaluation and management. Okay, guys? All right, just wanted to share that information with you. I hope this is beneficial to some of you. It helps you to use this um, alphabetic index like you're supposed to. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.